Welcome to the Asking Why podcast. I'm your host, Clint Davis, and I am super excited about today. I have my good friend, Haley Brooke, on. Um, welcome, Haley. Hello. Glad to have you. Sorry, I'm so bad with my composure. Oh, no, it's fine. We were just laughing before because she took a sip of her coffee right before we went live, and I said, thanks for the coffee. <laughs> but you whispered it. <laughs> so it was even funnier. <sighs> welcome to the podcast. Hi. Hey. Happy to be here. Yeah, how's it going? It's going, you know. Good. So tell us a little bit about your story. I know your story, but for those that don't listen, uh, or that don't listen, if they don't listen, they're definitely not going to hear it. <laughs> that listen, we're going to have trouble this episode already. I can tell we're going to be ridiculous. Okay, so tell us about, you know, who you are, your story, where you're from, blood type. Oh, I don't know my blood type. <laughs> that does not surprise me. <laughs> Do you know yours? Yeah, I think it's O positive, but that's I, that's because I have it on I had it on my dog tags forever. So it's I easy. thought it was on your your um, <laughs> license, but it's not because I went to look one day, and it's not just that I'm a donor. Yep. So people just know that I'm a giver. <laughs> that's right. But they don't know what I need. That's right. You know. Oh, that that don't go deep. We can get into that. <laughs> um, man, uh, I am from Shreveport, born okay. and raised. Um. I spent one year away from Shreveport, my freshman year of college. Um, I went to a little school called Oral Roberts University in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Oh, boy. Loved it. Wonderful experience, but way too expensive. And so I brought myself back home and finished my, uh, my undergrad here. Um, so, yeah, that was my one year away from Shreveport experience. Um, grew up in the church. Uh, I'm a singer. I'm a musician. Uh, it's where I learned how to essentially do everything that I do. Mm -hmm. Um, when, when do you remember kind of having the bug for music and art, artist stuff and all that? So I remember, first of all, my memory is terrible mm -hmm. as you know, but I remember being on a stage as young as like four Mm -hmm. like a children's choir or something like that. Nothing like ultra serious. But, I mean, so probably even before then, um, I have a little niece. She's two and a half, and she sings all the time. So I have to believe that I was probably similar, right. um, and I just don't recall. Uh, but, yeah, so I singing as young as four. Um, when I turned six, begged my parents to take me two piano lessons mm. didn't learn anything um i just memorized everything um didn't learn music theory and how to read and all that jazz literally mm -hmm. um and do, do you remember who that piano teacher was her name i don't remember her last name but miss sandra miss sandra shout out to miss sandra name. yeah shout out miss sandra bird song music was the name of her company okay um and so I did that for a few years. Um, I started playing and singing, I believe, when I was in fifth grade. I don't know what age that is, what, 10? So piano and singing? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and like worship for the, the church, Shreveport Community Church. Shout out to them. Um, and so just had opportunity like that for a long time from a very young age. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I just kind of had this attitude of, well, I'm just going to be a worship leader, so I don't need to know all the complicated stuff. And um, I just taught myself chords later in life. Hey, you just need to know like four chords, right, for worship songs. <laughs> it's, it's not super complicated. Yeah. Um, but uh, lo and behold, uh, the Lord had some other plans for me. Um, and that was always my dream. Honestly, to say it's not still my dream would be a lie, but I always envisioned myself, you know, recording albums and traveling the world and leading worship. And um, But it was probably my junior year of college that I kind of felt this shift. And um, in my house, uh, I grew up under very ultra conservative parents um and we did not listen to secular music mm -hmm. um in our house and you know we didn't watch 
barely anything. We had this thing called a TV Guardian that was for like VHSs and it like took out cuss words and it muted the screen and then like writing came. We were so young, we couldn't read anyway. Um, but yeah, so just a very kind TV of- TV Guardian, I'm gonna have to Google that. Yeah. Just a very, um, <clears throat> pretty, pretty strict upbringing. Sure. And so it was never conveyed to me that like secular music is bad, but I think that that is what was conveyed to me unintentionally, mm -hmm. just because it was like we we just didn't do it. Um, and so I I feel like I kind of took on this um, like legalistic view probably about like listening to secular music and it's not holy and if it's not holy then it can't honor god and um so mm -hmm. i didn't listen to it i didn't listen to secular music like on my own terms for a long time yeah um <clears throat> and then my junior year of college i went through a breakup and i wrote a song and it wasn't a christian song oh like oh my gosh um what do you mean christian song um, overtly, like, um, no talk of Jesus, no biblical principle, no like lesson. It just was me coping through a breakup and expressing my feelings. Mm -hmm. Um, so when I say secular, I just mean like non-Christian. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and so... I didn't even really know what a secularist song was really supposed to sound like, so I had friends um, in the industry uh, that were both secular artists as well as Christian, and so I sent the song to them and was like, you know, is this good? Like, am I, you know, on the right track? And anyway, so that was my first experience writing a song that was not a worship song, mm -hmm. um, and I felt like I just kind of had this. You know, I had looked at at secular music as this thing that was bad, and it's just like the Lord was like, "Hey, this is not this thing in and of itself is not bad, and I can use anything." And then it was, you know, this idea of people that are Christian um, artists you know, they get put in a box. Like, very rarely do you have Christians that cross over to, mm -hmm. like, secular radio stations. And so all of a sudden it just was kind of like I saw this whole gigantic group of people that would never turn to a Christian radio station. And so ultimately it was like, okay, so Christian music is pretty much for Christians. And then just this idea of, like, you know, we are really called to be light and darkness and to go where people are and not to, I love Christian music. Worship music is still what I listen to on a regular basis in my car. It's very necessary. But for me, it just was kind of like this aha moment to where it was this thing that I looked at as something that was negative and that I didn't need to touch as something that God was calling me to do to, you know, reach people that you know might never step foot in a church or um and even in like my uh i gig full time i have for i'm in my 11th year this year wow what does gigging mean um like fishing gig like <laughs> i think that's the frog yeah that's right yeah um <clears throat> no i you are uh, from louisiana if you know that okay. i've never done it i hate frogs um i play and sing and I do it for a living. So I'm in bars, I'm in restaurants, uh, a couple like small venues that are in town locally, um, three to five nights a week. Uh, my average has been closer to like four and five the last few months. Um, I have half of next week off and I'm really looking forward to it. Most of next week off actually. And um, you, you sing cover songs, you sing yes. your own music? Cover. Okay. Um, Unfortunately, in Shreveport, uh, we're not a big music uh, appreciating city. <laughs> so there are just a couple places where people go intentionally to hear original music. But for the most part, when like someone's paying you to come and play at their restaurant or play at their bar, 
typically they want you to be playing music that people can hear and recognize and mm-hmm. sing with and um you know basically like taking the place of what they would be playing over the speaker right um but it has the allure of live music yes yeah. yes 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 so um what i was finding in my gigging music gigging is that um i would be singing something that was not a christian song um I'll use Desperado, which honestly could totally be a Christian song. I don't think Don Henley is a believer, but man, he wrote an, an amazing song that could totally be an altar call song. But I was singing Desperado or something like it. And I saw this lady in the corner and she was like weeping. And uh, she had tipped me and I always make an effort to go and thank people you know personally that that tipped me and so I walked over and she just was like overcome with emotion and I I thanked her and she was just like there's something uh, there was just something about you know that song and your voice and you know for me I'm I know it's not me I know it's just the Lord in me but Mm -hmm. you know I'm here in a bar singing a song that is not a Christian song and here someone's life is being impacted because the Lord isn't limited by, you know, the content of a song or Mm. anything like that. And so, um, yeah, I don't know where I was (laughs) going with that. No, it's good. I mean, what you're describing is the fact that you, you were churched, you know, heavily Mm -hmm. churched, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, pretty conservative family Mm -hmm. and, the idea of secularism and, and worship, you know, was a, a pretty rigid viewpoint that <clears throat> you can only sing songs about God and to Jesus and about Jesus mm-hmm. in order for it to be worship. Mm-hmm. And you kind of leaned into, well, how do I get into non-Christian circles and how do I be a light in the darkness in a secular environment, saying the truth of God, being the truth of God in my life and in my actions, but also, you know, sing songs. Mm-hmm. And that's opened the door for you to get to do this. And you see God show up in areas where, you know, quote unquote, it would be godless. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the question would be, is secular, is, are there secular songs that are sinful? 100%. Yeah. 100%. So how do you, so that takes, you know, spiritual maturity that takes our own discernment. So how do you kind of find yourself working through that, picking songs? Do you pick songs? Do you just play whatever they want you to? How does that work? I, um, I'm not going to name any any names of artists, but there are certain artists that um, I, I don't I don't cover. Uh, and yeah, I'm very much like and, and I write very similarly. Like I always picture. For me, it's like my my little nephews and my niece. And I'm always thinking about like what would be acceptable for them to hear. Mm. Um, and so that's kind of where I, um, how I decide like what I will and won't sing. Like I don't sing any songs that like have a cuss word unless it's something I can really easily change, you know, without it compromising the song. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I'm not going to sing songs that are, you know, about being in the club or sex or, you know, all that stuff. Not that that stuff in and of itself is, is bad. Um, you know, and it is something that I've thought about, especially now that I'm married, because mm-hmm. it's like, well, those things were, but now it's not. That's right. But even still, like, who is my audience? Right. And so it's it's not even about like what's okay for me. Um, you know, what am I trying to? What kind of influence am I trying to have? Um, well, it's also delineating worship, and I would say, well, the question is, isn't worship everything that you do, no matter what you're doing? Should be. Yeah. So it's like just because you're singing a song about Jesus, if you're singing a song about life, you you can be worshiping there too, mm-hmm. right? It's where your mind and your heart is, not necessarily the the outpouring of mm-hmm. it. And then there's things that you can't do and worship God. Exactly. Right? You can't do heroin and worship God. You can drink maybe a glass of wine. You can have a nice steak. You can go on a vacation. And then you have to go, well, is, is that too much wine? Am I healthy to drink wine? Is that too much money on the steak? Am I living lavishly with this vacation? Like, right, same thing with the music. Mm-hmm. You can 
each song can be worship, but if our heart's not postured right, then each song can be, you know, worshiping something else. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, I am very deliberate about the songs that I cover. Um, and I'm very deliberate about the kind of, uh, music that I write. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> we have artists like what need to breathe. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think of some others that I like. I mean, even NF to some degree, mm-hmm. he's a rapper, um, raps about mental health and talks mm-hmm. about these things. And he mentions God in some of his songs, not in all of them. Yeah. Um, but the, like as a therapist, when I listen to some of those songs, there's truth in there, right? right. They're very particular in what they're saying is not untruthful. Yeah. And so if it's truthful about life and marriage and relationships and pain and anguish, and communicating those things, then it can't, it is worship and it is acknowledging the pain of life. Mm-hmm. I think it's when people take the, and then start applying ideas and beliefs and what you should do about those things. When it becomes, you start speaking lies and deceit and does that yeah, make sense? For sure. I mean, I'm um, actually was just working on uh, this song this morning, but I had this, uh, it started from a concept and it just kind of like dropped in one day because sometimes that's how it works Hmm. with songwriting. Um, It's not always like the same. I love the question, like, how do you write? Like, is it the lyrics or is it the melody? And I'm like, it depends because it varies. Um, But anyway, this this concept just kind of dropped in my spirit um, a couple months ago. And it's the saying that the sticks and stones can break my bones, but words can never hurt me. And I've been reading about the power of our thought life and what we speak. And so I was like, I'm going to write a song about this concept. Mm. And it's um, about how it's not true, to be clear. But, you know, that's a biblical principle that there's life and death and what we say. Um, And I'm reading, uh, rereading the Switch on Your Brain Mm -hmm. by Dr. Caroline Leap. And, you know, just reading about that it doesn't even just damage another person. Like you're, you literally damage your own self. Like whenever you think toxically or say, yeah, Mm -hmm. say things critically or whatever. And so, um, and we live in an age where like, I feel like bullying, especially like verbally is like, I mean, I have no idea how to quantify it, but to me, it seems way more prevalent than ever. I'm sure social media has a major role. Um, and that being the way that I feel, but, um, and so just talking about how, like, no words hurt Mm -hmm. and words like are something that you can't take back. And words are things that stick with people for life. Mm -hmm. Like people are adults and having to go to therapy and unlearn, you know, all these labels that have been put on them from other people. And so even in that, that song is not, overtly Christian. There's no mention of God or Jesus, but it's biblical truth. Mm -hmm. Um, And so a lot of my writing, I do try to kind of come at it from that angle where it's, uh, you know, more covert, if you will. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, I I think some of my favorite songs that I still listen to, you know, are whenever I I need an emotional outlet to Mm -hmm. something. Yeah. And I need to process pain or, you know, maybe it's not even about me. A lot of musicals are like this, you know, like I love a good musical um, because they're, they just hit you with the emotions of life and pain and suffering and, and grief and hardship and betrayal. And, you know, music is so inner inner tied into our memories and our mm-hmm. feelings around smell and sights and sounds and all these things. And mm-hmm. um, have you listened, have you seen, um, oh man, Dear Evan Hansen? Do you know what that is? So it's a it was a uh, show on Broadway for a while, and I'd listened to like I don't remember if it was the Grammys or something that I'd seen it online, and like this guy sang this song, and I was like, oh, that song was great. And it was about social media, and the guy has uh, he's on the spectrum in some ways, but he's introverted, and he I don't want to give a bunch of spoilers to people, but he um, the it's staring through the window is the name of the song, and so he feels like he's kind of looking at people through the window, and they're all passing by, and the window is the screen of his phone and, and it's this kind of play on words and mm. anyway so I like the song well then the, now they have a movie uh, Ben Platt is the the singer I don't know if you know who that is but his voice is ridiculous and he's a, a openly gay man has you know sings all these other songs but 
I I love his you know this this musical and man it just there's things about it in the story and it in there in high school and so you know there's bullying and there's harassment and there's feeling left out and there are these things that are like what everybody goes through and for right. me what my clients are going through and what I'm helping people through and and so it's not Christian. It's not about God. It's not about Jesus, but all truth is God's truth. And right. these are all his children and his story. And so I do think that you have to be careful and you have to have discernment, mm -hmm. you know? And I think, you know, to give your parents credit, like, I think it's great that they limited cursing and sex and violence and, and you, 100%. Know, you know, and kept you from those things today. It feels like, man, I mean, my child, it was not that it was watch whatever you want to watch. And, mm -hmm. you know, and there were huge consequences for that. And as you know, like I'm trying to train people on, hey, how do we get back to keeping our kids safe? And yeah. the difference, right? The problem is, is when it's inconsistent, mm -hmm. right? When it's at home, it's like, let's do all these conservative things around these topics, but let's get wild about judgment or criticism or, you know, let's hate those people that are creating it. And mm -hmm. I think that's the, that seems to be the kind of middle ground was you're going, no, we have to be in the world right? and find ways to speak truth about God that's not, you know explicitly about Jesus every time if we want to get in these avenues. Right. Uh, we were talking before you came on and uh, I'm speaking at the 43rd governor's conference this afternoon. Right. Governor. 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 And, uh, <laughs> and so they asked me to come speak, which is crazy. Um, but I was telling my pastor, like they're, they're not asking a pastor to come and speak at this thing. Right. Like, because it's not a Christian deal. Mm -hmm. It's not the church. It's the government coming yeah. together and saying, we need to deal with juvenile justice issues and trauma and addiction. Well, because I have the certifications and the secular worldview that never talks about Jesus or God or hardly any spirituality, that gets my foot in the door. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to go and be me, and that comes with them knowing I'm a Christian and them knowing I'm going to talk about that and I'm going to share the gospel because that's who I am. Yeah. And so it's that dynamic of, if I was just a pastor who sat with people, I wouldn't get invited into those spaces most likely, you know, and it's the same way with you where you're going, I want to be invited into spaces where then I can be the light and use my wisdom and my discernment to do that. Yeah. Does that sound right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And it was a huge ordeal when I played in a bar. I bet. I mean, you would have, <laughs> you would have thought my parents are totally cool with it now but you would have thought like the world was ending what's well, a huge worldview shift for them right like it's a mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i i've i think i've kind of always looked at the world differently than a lot of people especially a lot of heavily churched people um mainly <laughs> Some people call would call it rebellion. I call it being a self thinker. <laughs> <laughs> it can be either. It depends on the position of your heart. That's right. And I always felt like I was following my heart, even though it led me astray many a times. And that's a whole message in and of itself. Mm -hmm. But you know, it is deceitful above all things. It sure is. Yep. It sure is. But um, yeah, I think I've kind of always looked looked at things a little differently. And so for me you know, my, my thought was like, like if Jesus was here on the earth right now, like he would totally be hanging out at a superior steakhouse bar. Mm -hmm. Like maybe he's, you know, definitely not doing probably a lot of things that people are doing in there, <laughs> but he was eating with the prostitutes and, you know, lots of craziness that, you know, flipped their whole worldview upside down, the Pharisees. Oh, oh for sure. I, I posted recently, which I don't do this hardly ever, but I just posted on social media like, hey, if anybody has 50 cents contact information or publicist or whatever, like send it to me because I'd love to have him on the podcast. And it was funny, the like response. And I left it on for a couple of days and I deleted it because that's just, I don't need it on there forever. But it was just funny. It was like, there was a little bit of tension of like, and it wasn't anything crazy, but I could tell it was like, oh, this surprises me that you would have 50 cent on like, your podcast. I'm like, okay? do you think Jesus wouldn't want to talk to this guy coming into town, you know, and find out his story uh -huh. and love him and try to share the gospel with him and right. be the light to him and figure out what it, you know, my first question was going to be, hey, bro, you got this huge, you know, gaudy cross on your neck. Tell me about that. Like, yeah. tell me why you wear a cross. Like in all of these photos in Treeport, I would love to hear your relationship with God and Jesus. Like, that's the conversation. What are you doing for the city? How does that and what you're doing add up? Like, I would mm -hmm. love to, you know, have that discussion with him. But it's the same thing. It's like, oh, if yeah. You're, if you're over here, it's like you shouldn't even be in the same room with that person. 
Right. And, and it's like, you're that's like, crazy. Have you read the, the Bible? <laughs> <laughs> For sure. And so, yeah, it was a big ordeal. And, and, and it wasn't the only thing. Like, there have been other things that have happened just throughout my career that, you know, my parents didn't necessarily agree with and um, was met with resistance. And for me, you know, trying to maneuver the being honoring and respectful, but also like, you know, this is something that I've prayed about. This is something that I feel good about. And, you know, this isn't like a, to spite you in your face Mm -hmm. doing this because I know you don't like it. Like, honestly, that's never been where I came from. Although probably was perceived by them a lot as a kid that that's where I came from. But yeah, my, my heart has always been to seek the Lord and, you know, I'm going to do what I feel like the Lord's calling me to do. Do I miss it sometimes? Absolutely. But for me, it's just always been like, that's what my, my heart is to please the Lord. And so, yeah, it's just one of those things where it's, you know, what is it? The fear of man is a snare. Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah, just like, you know, if I had to choose between pleasing the Lord or pleasing a person, like for me, it's easy. And I just think for a lot of people, maybe it's just not, not as easy. Um, but yeah. Well, it has a lot to do with personality too, right? Like definitely <clears throat> temperament, personality, you know, having kids now, I realize, man, we are, we have so little control over how they turn out and who they are and, you know, their personalities and their, yeah. their, their, their like coping mechanisms and all this kind of things. I thought as a therapist, I was just going to be able to like magician mm-hmm. with love and safety and security, these kids into like Jesus. And it's like, Oh man, <laughs> I don't have any control over this at all. I mean, you know, we don't, don't want to do the best we can, but I've really realized in the last couple of years, like I thought I had a lot more control over things than I, than I do. Mm. Um, Okay, so if you're not if you're not watch, I mean if you're just listening to this and you don't know Haley, she has some pretty awesome hair. So tell us about the hair and where that came from. Oh and, my goodness! Yeah, another thing that was the end of the world. Um, <laughs> so I uh, I have locks. Um, I just had my twelfth year. No, they are not named. I'm not weird like that. Um, but I have people that. I know people that have named them. I'm not attached to them like that, but um, 12 years in May, which is wild. Mm -hmm. Um, And I was wanting to do something different, kind of dramatic with my hair. Um, I don't do, to this day, I don't do anything to my hair. And it was no different whenever they, my hair was free Mm -hmm. and not locked. Um, And so my hair was just always long and like, I just was like, I want to do something drastic. And so um, I had talked to a friend of mine, um, and I was like, what can I do? And she was like, you could, like, cut it really short. You could do, like, a pixie cut. And I was like, no, nah, I can't do a pixie cut. My head is way too small. <laughs> and then- <laughs> As we found out when you put those headphones on. <laughs> so small. <laughs> like, I like, like, the most ridiculous stick figure is me like the proportions and such because I'm so long yeah. and my head is tiny. Anywho, so I was like, no, I can't do a pixie cut. And then I just was looking at different things. And at the time I was um, working with, um, where was I working? An autism center, um, learning how to be a be- behavioral therapist. And a coworker of mine was like, you have to check out this girl. She's amazing. She's like a professional hula hooper. I was like, what? I can't hula. I don't even hula hoop. I can't move my hips like that, like, to keep it up at all. And I was like, that's super random that you want me to watch it. But she was like, it's amazing. She does, like, five at a time. And she was super into it. And I was like, okay, I'll check her out on YouTube. So I type in her name. And it just so happened that she was white blonde and had these massively thick and long dreadlocks and she's like hula hooping right so she's like you know whipping back and forth and her hair is just going and I was like oh my gosh that is amazing and she was like beautiful like she looked she looked like a barbie and so I guess for me it was I had seen like people that were white that had their hair locked but 
they looked like they did drugs. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so it never appealed to me. But seeing somebody like her, like, pull it off, I was like, oh. And so then I probably spent a good three months doing my research, right? Because I had to prepare this speech for my parents. Not only that, but I just was like, I knew it was a commitment and not something that I could just take out whenever I felt like it Mm -hmm. and put back in whenever I wanted it. So I really wanted to make sure that this is what I wanted. So I like looked at all the cons and looked, you know, the pros and whatever and um, decided I was going to do it. And so when I told my parents, I was 21, I was paying my own bills. And this was the first time that I respectfully told my parents I was doing something instead of asking for permission. And so I came with my argument and I was like, I'm a worship leader at church. I'm a 4.0 college student. Like I don't do drugs. I don't have tattoos. Like, you know, I'm just like going down this list of like why, why it's not a big deal. It's just hair. Um, I can brush it out if I want to. I don't have to shave my head because that was also very important. Again, small head. And I also look just like my dad, and he is bald. And so I wasn't trying to be like his little... Mistaken. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I couldn't pull the the whole Britney Spears thing. And so I was like, I did did all this research, and my olive branch was that my brother was getting married like that next month. And I was like, if you would like, I will wait to do this until after my brother's wedding. And they were like, "Uh, yeah, (laughs) that's that's what we want. And so sure enough, my brother got married. It's, It's how I remember their anniversary. They got married in April of 2012. I got my hair done in May. And it was like deal or no deal driving to Dallas to get my hair done. Um, like whenever we left and my mom went with me, she got a call from my dad. She was like, your dad will give you $250 if you won't (laughs) do this. (laughs) And I was like, no, like I just, I did, like, I know that this is what I want to do. And then like halfway there, call. Like, literally, like, deal or no deal. Like, the closer that we're getting to Dallas, like, you know, it's the getting are going more out. and more risky. <clears throat> $500 if you will not do this. And I'm like, no, but I'm going to be honest. There was, like, a tiny part of me that was like, this is kind of making me want to do it a little more. And then I'm in the chair. She gets a call. Your dad will give you $1,000 if you won't do this. And, you know, I had the the same response. But, yeah, the rest is history. It did take my dad several years to get get used to it. Um, And then, uh, but, yeah, I mean, again, it's been 12 years. It's, like, literally a part of who I am now. Mm -hmm. Um, It's so funny because people that I've met on the other side, like, I can't even imagine you, like. Oh, right. I definitely couldn't. Without the locks and, um But anyway, and so, yeah, it was just one of those things that I was young, and I was like, it's hair, and I wanted to do something drastic, and then had to think about being in the South and, you know, not knowing how it it would be received, and to this day, you know, I still have people stare at me whenever I, like, notice people doing it, because I feel like I've kind of tuned it all out, Um, but for the most part, like, nobody really cares. Um, but yeah, it was something that I had to think about. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the thing about your story that I find interesting is like, there's this dynamic of, <clears throat> you know, always not, not rebellion. Like we la- like we laughed about earlier, but I mean, they're just pushing back against the norm, not fitting in the box, mm-hmm. you know, wanting to do something different with music, your hair, you know, relationships, you know, all, you know, things in your life that you, you do that aren't the typical, yeah. and especially being in the South, you know, it's interesting when we go into conservatism you know, in a faith and liberalism, right? That, that, that kind of, all of that, this makes you more liberal quote unquote, or it should, but in reality, you're a pretty conservative person when it comes to faith and religion. Mm -hmm. And so it's just an interesting dynamic that, you know, not only you, but I mean, I'm sure many listeners out there who, 
who want to do different things, who maybe want to play music or who want to break out from their family system or who want to not be a doctor or who want to marry somebody, you know, of a different culture, whatever the thing is that people want to do, what would you say to those people? Like, what would be your challenge? Um, man, it's, well, it's so hard because I can't imagine doing the things that I've done without like just having, I mean, it's just kind of been innate, I guess for Mm -hmm. me. So I, I would just say like, I mean, to be prayerful about everything, you know, um, always check your heart whenever you're wanting to do something, especially if it's, uh, Counter, I was about to say countercultural, um, but I would just, again, like Jesus was very countercultural, and that doesn't mean it's a free pass for us to just like do whatever we want. But, um, and like I said, for me, everything that I've done, um, you know, I've just kind of always checked the posture of my heart. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I said, I've got it wrong. I have definitely gotten it wrong more times than once. Um, so yeah, I would just say to be prayerful. And then if you feel like, you know, the Lord is telling you to do something or, you know, the Lord is um, okay with, you know, you doing something, um, just be bold, be courageous, mm-hmm. you know? Um, yeah, if the thing's not scary and you do it, <clears throat> or if it has no consequences, you're not really being brave or bold. True. You know, if the thing that you're doing is just easy and it causes no stress or tension, then it doesn't take much bravery or any boldness or cur- courage to do it. And I do think that's that's a great great advice. I think I would say the same thing. You, that's why we need counsel, mm-hmm. right? That's why we need other people in our lives who know us and, and know our hearts and know our tendencies and, and know our strengths and our weaknesses and our Enneagram or our Myers-Briggs or, you know, whatever personality test you like. Know our spiritual gifts. But there's so many people who they're trying to make big decisions. You know, they're trying to push against the the narrative, right? Jesus tells us to go against the grain, to, to mm-hmm. be on the narrow road. Right. Right. That leads to life that few find. And so I do find it interesting the the dynamic of, yeah, we wanna we wanna respect our parents, we wanna respect society, we wanna fit in some culture norms to some degree, but then God calls us out of those things and and how do we know when that's our rebellion or how do we know when that's mm-hmm. right? And that takes wisdom, that takes the Holy Spirit, that takes being in the word, and that takes good counsel, good support, good friends around you. And if you don't have that before you make big decisions, you should probably try to to find some of that. Definitely. Yeah. I definitely have some people, not many, very, very small amount of people that I do, you know, run things by and value their opinion. Mm -hmm. Um, You shouldn't value everybody's opinion. Right. (laughs) You know, everybody's got one. (laughs) Shoot. Um, I read something this morning. I can't remember exactly the quote, but it was like opinions are like the most undervalued or the, the, the most overvalued thing on earth because like there's no research, there's no evidence, there's no like backing for people's opinions and everybody has them. And yeah. yet we value people's opinions so much. And it's like, you, you have no, this person is just a random stranger on social media. Right. You know, and you can get 3000 people saying, I love this song. You did a great job. And one person's like, ah, it sucks. And you're like, ah, <laughs> You know, Failure. yeah, but it's like, that's what we do. You yeah. know, we value these things that, that don't matter. Yeah, definitely. Good stuff. Any other thoughts? What you got coming out like, uh, the next little bit professionally, anything so, people can go to? Yeah. Um, I am about to go through a rebrand. Um, I haven't had a ton of music out digitally. I do have a few things, um, two singles and then I did a Christmas EP back in 2020 but yeah it's been a minute since I've released anything Mm -hmm. um and honestly probably everything on there is coming down um my name's gonna be changing um I don't think I'm ready to share but um my name is gonna be changing I did just get married um and I'm Haley Brooke Whalen now uh, officially. Officially. It's <laughs> uh, an inside joke. Um, but yeah, so my previous music has been more 
pop leaning. Um, basically, the reason for that is I write from an instrument, and I'm not a producer at all. Like a very like bad when it comes to dealing with any of the recording, you know, Logic or GarageBand or anything. So everything that I wrote was from a single instrument, either guitar or keys, and then I gave it to someone that was a producer, and then the producer decided basically the direction. And it was kind of like, you know, you kind of have to do this to get to where you want and blah, 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 blah. And there's some truth to that. But um, I'm really excited about this new project that I have coming out. It'll be a five or six song EP. Um, and it's very, uh, very me. Um, it's definitely more soul leaning. Uh, I grew up listening to a lot of gospel music, and I went to a pretty multicultural church for our area. In our area, multicultural means black, white, Hispanic. Right. <laughs> it's n- not very, but for a- for our area it is. And so we did all different kinds of music, but gospel music was always kind of like what I was drawn to. And so I sing like that. Um, I have a, a soulful kind of smooth voice, and so... This project, I feel like, is me because I'm really leaning into that. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm hoping to release a single from that, like, before the end of the year. We'll see. Um, and then probably drop the full project sometime first quarter. Um, but, yeah. 2025. 2025. That's crazy <clears throat> that we're already – in 2025 it just makes me so sad <laughs> yeah i mean part of the, part of the reason right that you've been selling music is because you've been helping your husband yeah so shout out to him ben was on um if you listen to the podcast regularly he was on i don't remember how many episodes ago five or six now and he it was um, the best one yeah. the best one you've ever done i know it's fantastic <laughs> yeah, shout out to ben he started jujitsu since then so from there i talked him into getting into some jujitsu so it's been fun seeing them on tuesdays and thursdays yeah i'm i'm glad he's got that community that's right um, but yeah, any other thoughts, comments? Nothing that comes to mind. It's awesome. I appreciate you coming on and talking and kind of telling your story. And I think, you know, every time I talk with you, just who you are and, and how much you love the Lord and, and just how much you care about people and, and how you want to just be yourself, you know, really just shines through and, and that's awesome to get to see and get to know you. And I just wanted the world to kind of hear who you are and what you do and hopefully show you support, support and can they find, where can they find you on like Instagram and all that stuff? So right now, um, my Instagram and my, um, my Instagram is I am Haley Brooke. Um, Facebook is Haley Brooke music. Um, but that'll all be changing. In sure. The but if they follow months, you now, then they, they will can be see able, the they rebrand will find it. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't do YouTube. I don't do anything I'm supposed to. You'll go to my Instagram and just, you'll be disappointed because yeah, there's no music. Been, been so mad at you about that. <laughs> I think uh, the last photo was one from our wedding. Probably. It was like five five months ago. It's come by quick. I know. But yeah, there has been a lot going on and with our business and all of that, but we're hiring people and so hopefully my time will be freed up a little bit and um yeah, I I joke and say like most people have a nine to five, but I feel like I have like a seven AM to ten o'clock PM. Like at least half the week and so it definitely does take a little bit of a toll on my ability to create but you know all good things and it's just the season that I'm in but um, I'm gonna be better this is the accountability that's right it's in the airwaves (laughs) now it's out you gotta get it done by January man you're toast I will definitely be working on some some music for all the socials and stuff but yeah Awesome. Well, thank you all for listening. We hope you enjoyed it. Um, We hope you have a good week. God bless you and have a good uh, rest of the time until we drop another one of these things. Bye.